Five or Six Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Well, beautiful sunshine, but we were still well below normal the temperature department, and that's going to continue over the next couple days. Five or Six Alerts posted for possible frost and freeze conditions. A full look at your forecast straight ahead. Right now on News Channel 6 and 4, several properties up for sale in the heart of the Garden City. What it could mean for the future of downtown Augusta. Plus, the city of Augusta getting ready to start negotiating a new ambulance contract. We'll let you know what city leaders are looking to get out of the deal. And South Carolina lawmakers getting to work on the state budget. We'll show you what could be in it and what might be left out as your news at 4 starts now. Television Park. This is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with one of downtown Augusta's biggest property owners placing multiple properties on the market. Tiffany Hobbs spoke with city development leaders about what this could mean for downtown Augusta. Morris Communications has just placed eight downtown buildings up for sale. Leaders at the Downtown Development Authority are excited about what the sale of these properties can do for downtown Augusta. Augusta city leaders tell us that multimedia company Morris Communications has owned as much as 30% of downtown properties over time. In March, the company placed the properties, which line 5th, 6th, 7th, and Reynolds streets, for sale at prices totaling more than $7 million. Executive Director of Augusta's Downtown Development Authority, Margaret Woodard, tells us that the hope is that they become income-producing properties that will be an asset to downtown. At the end of the day, it's the piece. I mean, it's it's just part of a uh, part of the piece where you get more people downtown. You're going to have demand for more living. You're going to have demand for more retail and services. So it's 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 part of the puzzle, and we're very excited. Woodard tells us she is looking forward to the sale of these properties, adding to the growth that downtown Augusta has seen in the past few years. In Augusta, Tiffany Hobbs, WJBF. News Channel 6. And there's a new team in place to shape ambulance service in Augusta. Commissioners are expected to create a subcommittee Tuesday that will negotiate ambulance service with new zone provider Central EMS. The committee includes some city leaders and hospital representatives, but no commissioners. They'll determine what service the city wants and how much it will pay. That was one of the real, the big stipulations that we all talked about was that we didn't want any elected officials being involved um, on this committee just so that there is a mechanism there to make sure that we have some uh, input from people within that industry as well as you know what Augusta's interests are. So I, I think this is the correct way to move forward. Central EMS did not tell commissioners how much the company will need for an ambulance subsidy at a meeting last week, but they did say they'll need to make a 10% profit. It is time now for a check of the forecast. After that, we turn 10. Thank you. A suspect in a local murder is still on the run today. Authorities are looking for Rigoberto Padilla in relation to a body found on Wade Road Friday morning. They believe the man was shot at least once at an unknown, unknown location before his body was found on the side of the road there. Police say Padilla was last seen leaving Wade Road. If you know where he is, call the police. Educators in South Carolina might see another increase to their base pay this year. The South Carolina House of Representatives began debating their budget plan Monday. Jason Raven tells us about the education components of the budget. State lawmakers are considering raising salaries for teachers in South Carolina once again. The current proposal would increase the statewide minimum salary schedule by $2,500 at each step. The starting salary for teachers in South Carolina would stand at $42,500 a year if it's approved. Um, our, theme, our theme for public education for our subcommittee was Number one, we wanted to take care of teachers. We wanted to put an SRO in every school, and we wanted to address uh, literacy and learning loss. To help cover the increase, state lawmakers will send an additional $216 million to school districts. Similar to last year's budget, all of this money is included in one single line, the state aid to classroom line. 
Now, the budget currently has a proposal to use $200 million to update school facilities to make them safer and to address learning loss due to COVID-19. The budget includes $42 million for literacy training for some elementary school teachers and $15 million for high-intensity tutoring programs in struggling school districts. In Columbia, I'm Jason Raven. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp outlining his budget proposal to fight the state's 40-year high inflation. Kemp says his focus is to strengthen school security, invest in health care, tackle public safety, and spur job growth. Georgia homeowners will get a one-time tax credit of about $500 on property taxes for each home as part of the homeowner tax relief grant. The amended fiscal budget will also help schools and allocate $50,000 per school and $5 million for paraprofessionals who want to become teachers to expand the workforce. It's been three years since Governor Kemp declared a public safety state of emergency or a public health state of emergency in Georgia. Hannah Latier spoke with local businesses and medical centers about what's changed since then. During Governor Kemp's televised address on March 14th of 2020, there were 64 cases of COVID-19 in Georgia. As of March 8th of this year, the Georgia Department of Public Health says there has been more than 2.3 million confirmed cases in the state. Over 100,000 are in Richmond and Columbia counties. Some businesses in the area tell us they're still seeing impacts from when the pandemic was at its peak. Our staff is definitely, our staff is really, you know, we've been on the issue for the past three years. And then with inflation, it's also affected us a lot. It's just been I spoke to tell me that many people missed primary care checkups over the past three years and it's important to start keeping up with those again. Jenny? Anna, thank you so much. Augusta Regional Airport is launching a new logo and the letter will the letters will look very familiar to anyone who flies in and out of Bushfield. The letters A G S stand for the Advancing Growing Stronger campaign. The initiative started several years ago and has resulted in restroom renovation and a baggage carousel. Executive Director Herbert Judon says the Gates 3 and 4 rehabilitation project will add just under 2,000 square feet to the terminal. We can figure the building uh, where you will no longer have to walk out on certain gates to board your plane. Construction will begin this summer with plans to be completed by Masters 2024. Funeral arrangements have been announced for a former Augusta commissioner. Andy Cheek died Friday. He served District 6 from 2000 to 2008. He moved to North Augusta after his term ended. His family will receive friends from 5 to 9 p.m. Thursday at Chance and Heidrich Funeral Home on Richmond Hill Road in Augusta. A celebration of life service is set for Friday at the chapel starting at noon. Coming up, the families of our cold case project coming together in their fight for justice. How law enforcement is helping these families when we come back. News Channel 6's Cold Case Project, bringing together law enforcement and families of cold case victims to learn about new technologies and gain renewed hope. Rena DuBose takes a closer look. It's only one way to come into this world, but it's a lot of ways that we lead the world. Families featured on News Channel 6's Cold Case Project came face to face with law enforcement over brunch. Another type of DNA that we work with is touch DNA. Um, are you familiar with touch DNA in terms of um, when you touch a, an object, especially an object that has a more abrasive surface, your skin cells rub off on that. One of the best surfaces that we work with is the actual handle of guns. 
The Georgia Bureau of Investigations, with its 15 regional offices mostly working on violent crimes, some of them cold cases, and Augusta's FBI also sharing. While they get called by local agencies on cases, victims can request them too. And with its national DNA database always evolving, there's hope. Anytime we arrest somebody, um, they get their, their swab taken. They're then entered in our in our CODA system, so their DNA is, is, is put on file. So if you've got a, a loved one who's got subject DNA that's uh, identified as unknown in the CODA system, it will continue to hit against these new uh, DNA samples that are put in this database all the time. So there's DNA Dope Project. An all-volunteer team of investigative genetic genealogists solve cases where people are unknown at first and through lots of family tree mapping with DNA from GEDmatch and family tree DNA are identified. That's my message to you, so don't give up. Uh, and then there's the CSRA's Project Drew. Founder Andrew Cato turned the pain of his missing and murdered son into success stories for others. When somebody goes missing, you contact the police and you say, hey, I've done everything I know to do, right? No. Robin Reeves, Travis Smith, Daquan Hines, with a flame still igniting and hope never fading, family shared. These are my sisters, Jeanette and Danette Millbrook. Um, they've been missing for, well, coming up March the 18th. It'll be 33 years. They're not healthy. So, I'm mama. I'm going to do it. He was murdered. He was standing outside with me and Uncle Canyon when two men walked into him and shot him. And that is all we know. Since my mother, she went missing when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, this year will be nine years. And the baby struggle. Um, I want to why. Uh, he never got to live until I was all 17. To this day, I can hear her sometimes. For more information on Cold Case Project or to share a case with us, just go to our website, wjbf.com, click on the Cold Case link. Coming up, some colder temperatures are on the way. Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller is up next with a look at your chilly by for six forecast. I'm Attorney Chief, live by for six Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Fiber 6 alert has been issued for tonight and tomorrow night for the potential of some freezing temperatures. We're going to talk about some widespread freezes all coming up with your forecast. Right now on News Channel 6 at 6, the city of Augusta is set to negotiate a new ambulance service contract. A look at who will do that and what the city is looking for. Plus, several buildings now up for sale in the heart of the Garden City, what that could mean for the future of downtown Augusta. And a freeze warning tonight for part of our area. Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller has a look at how low those temps might go, and we'll show you what it could mean for crops in the two states as your news starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Everyone, I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks so much for joining us. Brad is off tonight. Coverage you can count on begins at 6 with the city of Augusta putting together a new team to set the future of ambulance service. News Channel 6's George Escala has the story. Now that Central EMS has been awarded Augusta's ambulance zone, the city and the company need to talk, but no commissioners. That was one of the real the big stipulations that we all talked about was that we didn't want any elected officials being involved um, on this committee. Commissioner scheduled to vote Tuesday on creating an EMS subcommittee to negotiate ambulance service and costs with Central. These are the people that will make up the group with commissioners saying they don't want we're not exactly sure what that was, but we can tell you Central EMS is scheduled to take over May 8th. The company says it will be on the job even if a contract is still being negotiated.
One of downtown Augusta's biggest property owners is placing multiple properties on the market. Tiffany Hobbs spoke with city development leaders about what this could mean for the heart of the city. Morris Communications has just placed eight downtown buildings up for sale. Leaders at the Downtown Development Authority are excited about what the sale of these properties can do for downtown Augusta. Augusta city leaders tell us that multimedia company Morris Communications has owned as much as 30% of downtown properties over time. In March, the company placed the properties, which line 5th, 6th, 7th, and Reynolds streets, for sale at prices totaling more than $7 million. Executive Director of Augusta's Downtown Development Authority, Margaret Woodard, tells us that the hope is that they become income-producing properties that will be an asset to downtown. At the end of the day, it's the piece. I mean, it's, it's just part of, the, uh, part of the piece where you get more people downtown, you're going to have demand for more living, you're going to have demand for more retail and services. So it, it's, it's part of the puzzle, and we're very excited. Woodard tells us she is looking forward to the sale of these properties, adding to the growth that downtown Augusta has seen in the past few years. In Augusta, Tiffany Hobbs, WJBF. News Channel 6. Augusta Regional Airport has a new... So those temperatures warm back up. Three years ago, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp declared a public health emergency in Georgia due to COVID-19. Hannah Latier is here now with a look back and a look ahead when it comes to the virus. During Governor Kemp's televised address on March 14th of 2020, there were 64 cases of COVID-19 in Georgia. As of March 8th of this year, the Georgia Department of Public Health says there has been more than 2.3 million confirmed cases in the state. Over 100,000 are in Richmond and Columbia counties. Dr. Philip Cool at AU Health says we're not out of the woods yet, but we're making progress every day. We've really moved toward that step of, the, of this becoming part of an endemic disease, and that is one that just exists in our society. We're still just kind of one mutation away from this thing coming back and becoming more severe. So nobody should think that because of some date on the calendar that this thing is just magically over. Dr. Kula tells me that many people missed primary care checkups over the past three years. And it's important to start keeping up with those again. Jenny? All right, Hannah, thank you. Lawmakers in both Georgia and South Carolina talking budget tonight. In South Carolina, they're debating. The Viper Alert forecast, 70 on Thursday, 76 on Friday. And we'll continue those uh, rather cool temperatures as we get into next week. Let's give away our umbrella tonight, our Viper 6 <laughs> umbrella winner, Laura King of Augusta. Congratulations. You have your brand new umbrella. Register to win yours at WJBF.com. All right, Tim, thanks so much. And we want to get back to that story about the city of Augusta putting together a new team to set the future of ambulance service. Once again, George Escola. Now that Central EMS has been awarded Augusta's ambulance zone, the city and the company need to talk. But no commissioners. That was one of the real the big stipulations that we all talked about was that we didn't want any elected officials being involved um, on this committee. Commissioners scheduled to vote Tuesday on creating an EMS subcommittee to negotiate ambulance service and cost with Central. These are the people that will make up the group with commissioners saying they don't want the talks behind closed doors. I do agree with having the committee and with the commissioners not involved. I do think it needs to be open forum, though, where if people want to come and listen to what's being had, then they can listen. At a meeting last week, Central EMS did not provide what it plans to charge the city, but said the company needs to make a 10% profit. Negotiation should happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, ten percent is ten percent. It may be ten percent of a few different numbers, but at the end of the day, we need to come to the table and have a conversation. But some commissioners have a cost in mind that they don't want to exceed. I'm not going to go anything above two billion dollars because we actually had somebody in place, one of our own locals, and using our own. Um, citizens here to run the ambulance business. So if the committee comes back with above two million, you won't support? I probably would not. Central EMS has been awarded the work for ambulance calls in Augusta, but there's work to do to agree to a contract with the city.
in Augusta, George Escola, WJBF, News Channel 6. Central EMS is scheduled to take over May 8th. The company says it will be on the job even if a contract is still being negotiated. We'll be right back.